going to start with a quote and a disclaimer. Wendy Alsop's blog tagline at Practical Theology for Women reads, This blog is primarily a lecture to myself, but you are welcome to read along and participate. In the same way, this video blog is first and foremost me talking to myself, though fellow teachers are welcome to listen in and join the conversation. And of course I'm talking to my prof, since the reason I started looking into all this and I'm up at 11 p.m. for the fifth night in a row this week is that I have to do it for class. Also, because I want this to come off well, I'm obviously reading a prepared script and not just speaking off the cuff. Sorry. Integrity. It's doing the right thing when no one is watching, when people won't notice, when you won't get caught or in trouble, and it would be easier to take the shortcut. When I was an intern after high school, we were reminded to live by the highest standards. One of them was integrity, and I felt rather oversaturated with reminders. I posted a note on my cheese in the dorm room fridge. Personal. Don't eat. Don't make me use the I word. I know where the line is with my stuff, but I know some of the shortcuts when it comes to other people's media. Screenshots, library CDs. VPNs and YouTube and plugins to download the videos, turning to Google and Yahoo for clip art for the class newsletter and blog, and for activity pages for the spare moments in class. True, many of those are posted freely for sharing, but how often do I check with the image searches before just downloading the images? I've never checked the copyright of an image before downloading it, operating by the wishful idea of if it's there and it's grabbable, it must be free to use. As someone in my early 30s, I'm at the beginning edge of the generation that sees media as a free-flowing stream of ideas and entertainment rather than pinned down in paper and plastic and wax commodities. Did you see the version of Hamlet in 2000 with Ethan Hawke and Julia Stiles set in the modern-day metropolis? I would have a little picture of the poster here, but it's presumably copyrighted. Hamlet goes to Blockbuster and brings home a bunch of videos to make a video compilation to catch the conscience of the king. Is that legal? He's not making any money from it. He's paying for the rentals, yet it isn't really right, is it? What about the nap time CD that I made for my preschool class, with calming songs from various movie soundtracks that I checked out of the library? Again, I didn't sell the CD, and it did 16 children a lot of good for months, and it kept me from going mad listening to the same CD that we had at the beginning of the year, but I don't think that it was really legal, even though it felt like a good idea. Ron Lucier is an educator and a blogger who also advocates for respect of copyright. He comments in a recent post, In a world where creating and remixing is open to anyone, it's time to hold ourselves accountable to model the ethical use of online content. A lot of what I knew before this assignment about copyright comes from seeing it around on knitting patterns. Feel free to make this, but don't charge for the product beyond making it for a friend who pays you back for the materials you use, that kind of thing and seeing the odd Creative Commons license here and there. Now I've learned that there are actually quite a few different permutations of the CC license. The basic right the CC licenses re reserve is attribution. You've got to give credit where it's due. Other rights that may be reserved, but are not unless you say so, are derivatives, commercial rights, and share alike. If the licensor reserves derivation, you shouldn't use their work to make something different or cut off part of it. If the license is non-commercial, then don't sell it, and I imagine this goes beyond flat-out printing or burning of the work and selling it, like maybe showing a video of cartoons to the neighborhood children for 25 cents a piece, though I don't know who would do that. A share-like license means that if people use your work to make other things, they should keep the same kind of license on that that you have on your work, not more or less restrictive. Read more on their site, link below. Of course, some things may be marked as in the public domain, joining lots of the older things, like all the Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, and other classics you can find reprinted in Chinese bookstores and in Dover thrift editions in the States. Or the Mona Lisa herself, which you can photograph, print a copy of, spoof to your heart's content. Speaking of spoofing, it is alright to parody copyrighted works. The courts test for fair use when someone's accused of copyright infringement 
And if you're not stealing their market, but using an insubstantial bit in your own creation to advance interest in the art, you're probably safe. Still, I don't think my class newsletter falls into that category, so I still need to be more careful when downloading images for it. You can read more about fair use on Wikipedia, link in the doobly-doo. Fair use is hard to pin down, but for we who teach, there are some general guidelines that have been hashed out. Since education is a purpose that the government and most creators of content want to support, here's a list courtesy of Education World author Linda Starr. I've never really been on the other side of this. I've written exactly one knitting pattern in my life, my sole contribution to published craft of any kind. Link in the doobly-doo. As far as I know, no one has ever even made the scarf except me. And it's only as I've been researching this that I've thought of how I'd feel if someone started making the scarves and selling them without giving me credit. That might be what we need. Diane McKenzie, a commenter on Rob's blog, suggested that we have students choose the license for their own creative work that they post at school, and I think that's an idea with a lot of potential. Once they experience the feeling of ownership and protectiveness, they will have climbed into a person's skin and walked around in it, as Harper Lee put it. We can also teach students, partly by modeling, to ask for permission to use copyrighted material. Another commenter, Heather Jernin, shared that a student who received permission from a photographer in another country not only got to use the photo in his presentation, but was able to learn more on the topic he was presenting from that same copyright holder. I personally asked for and received permission to use someone else's sewing pattern for the little owls that I sold at a craft fair last summer to raise money for charity, and that was a big thing for me. Hopefully it's the first of many steps in the right direction. As someone in my early 30s, I'm at the beginning edge of the generation that sees media as a flea f Yeah, I can't do it.